Our next caller is Amanda from Washington. Hi, Amanda. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, I have kind of an interesting story, I feel like. Um, About six weeks ago, I came back from a six-week-long training with the Army, and I lost um, a good amount of weight with that, um, probably 10 pounds, and I started out at 134, um, so 10 pounds less than that, and uh, I didn't actually get to finish the training, so I want to go back. I have unfinished business, but because of that weight loss, when I try again, I want to have a lot more weight, mostly muscle, and I don't care if some of it's fat too. I just need to make sure I can still keep my run time up for this training and then um, just maybe gain some more stability. Um, and durability. uh, Because another thing I noticed with this training was my knees got quite inflamed. Um, We did a lot of kneeling with our rec sacks on and I've been doing uh, MAPS performance and I've been back for six weeks and I could just now do walking lunges again to touch my knee to the floor. So um, it's been a long road (laughs) Mm. of um, trying to heal up. Mm. But um, like I said, I want to try again. I'm pretty committed to it, but um, I want to see what you guys have to say for making it a little safer. Okay, so so you want to you want to get a good run time, and you want to continue to build muscle. What's the run time specifically? Like, what are you looking to maintain? Um, so right now, it's my run isn't a problem. Um, I need to do a 40 minute five miler, so it's just eight minutes a mile. Okay, and that's. Fairly easy for me right now. I could do a 37 minute just even if I was sick. So oh, cool. just that up. Okay. So you want to keep, you want to be able to maintain under 40 minute, five mile run, but you also want to build uh, muscle and strength. Yeah. Okay. You could, okay. You could probably maintain that with, by doing that particular run twice a week. Yeah, so twice a, a week. Once or twice. You know, twice a week I would do the five mile run. And then twice a week I would do, or maybe three days, but probably twice I would do heavy lifting and I would increase calories, make sure your protein intake is really high. And that should be the right recipe. I don't think you're going to lose your, your run time if you maintain those two days a week. And, and that leaves enough room for you to do a resistance training program that'll help you build muscle. I think performance is perfect. You mentioned knee inflammation. You got to maintain some of that agility and that mobility. You will build muscle on mass performance. It is not a, uh, it is definitely a muscle building program. It's just muscle building in a functional way. And I think that's what you need. So I'd stay on mass performance and then try what I said. I think you could even do, uh, I think if I were to do the running, I would go uh, three days a week, but it would look like this one mile on one day. That's it. So just one mile fast, which is take you seven minutes to eight minutes. Another day in there, it would be half the the total the the total uh, mileage, and then the one, only one day a week would it be full. So you're not running that much. Uh, and then what Sal said with maps performance in conjunction with those, I, you should be able to keep your time solid on that. Uh, and then most of the programming is focused around building muscle. And it would I would toggle you back and forth between two days a week and three days a week, completely based off of how you're feeling. So if you're feeling great and body's responding, and we don't have any sort of achiness. Uh, I'd let you train three days a week. If a week came through and you're like, ah, oh, I'm really tight, I'm stiff, I'd scale you back to two, but then I would put emphasis on the mobility sessions on those days, and that's where we'd spend more of our time. Okay. Um, with the knee inflammation, would you guys recommend trying, like, stepping back, doing some more, like, weighted lunges and trying to, like, increase the strength in my knees, or would that... Um, like, well, well, what do you so think the, is aggravating yeah. them right now? I, I think like assessing that would, would help a lot. Like, uh, you know, with our prime uh, program, I know we have a couple of different tests that kind of work your way through that, whether it's, you know, a tracking issue, whether it's an ankle or a hip, you know, derived issue. It, it sounds like it might be from it, you getting on your knees. Was it, it, the, or, was, was yeah. it the, is it the kneeling, the running or the exercise? Like the knee over the toe uh, kind of. Yeah, it was kneeling with a 70 pound rucksack. So that's what so I don't know if that's like something you just get used to, or yeah, if it's yeah. like, all right, yeah. that's just going to suck for okay. a while. Yeah, there's nothing, I mean, there's there's not much you can do um, to, to prevent that aside from working on strength and mobility in your ankles and hips. That might help with how you kneel. Mm-hmm. But okay. it sounds like the inflammation is from the actual pressure of the floor 
Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> yeah, so and that's a little different, right? That's going to be it's that's that means you know stop doing that, I guess, <laughs> to help with the inflammation. But <laughs> right. if that's what you're required to do. Um, then yeah. I would still work on mobility because the less tightness you have overall, probably the less painful it'll be well, to kneel down. There, no, there's some there's some some good points to that, right? I mean, the the more mobile you're going to be in your hips and ankles, the more you can rely on actually the muscles supporting, and so you're not actually just letting the resting all your weight on the joint. Right. So maybe what happens right now when you get down on the knee, you like completely are at rest, and you let your your all your weight go straight to the patella, where maybe if you have good ankle mobility, good hip mobility, and good strength in your lower body. You keep a little, you keep your muscles tense in that position, well, so they is, alleviate a little bit of the pressure. This is where I'd incorporate something like a Turkish getup as well, so you can kind of get up and down off your knee uh, from the floor, uh, weighted. So really try to like work on the skill of that and uh, be able to uh, activate your muscles properly to help support your joints in that position. Oh, that's great. And, awesome. Am, am I reading this correctly? Are you are you uh, trying to become an army ranger? Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Well, it's a little different going to the ranger leadership course versus going through assessment and selection. Um, so this is anything um, or the army's premier leadership course. You get a tab. Um, so I would have something on my uniform, but um, I wouldn't be a forward operator shooting bad guys wow. still mm -hmm. still still awesome yeah this is like i think uh, there's a theme to today right woman badass day yeah. we've yeah. had quite a few of you guys today yeah, that's seriously. awesome trying to be trying yeah. to be awesome. <laughs> I think well i know okay, so you said you have mass performance uh justin brought up maps prime do you have maps prime because if not we'll send I it have, over to you i have performance and prime yeah. all right you're, uh, you're set like then. smart smart the one. Best one myself then <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're you're set then amanda just just do those things i think you'll be okay Good. And I want to thank Adam to his push up video on YouTube. I started out doing my perfect push ups and only being able to do three. And by the time a year later, um, after working on the uh, suggestions that he made, I got 52 perfect push ups on wow. my PT. Wow, that's, that's, <laughs> wow. 50, that's 50 more push ups than Adam could do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark yeah. that up there. Right. That's yeah, uh, Adam 17, Sal 4. So we're doing good here. Oh, so. just, awesome. You just made that up. You just made that up for <laughs> Thanks for thank calling. Thank you, Amanda. In. Yeah, thank you guys no so problem. much. You know, uh, note here, when you're what it takes to maintain a certain level of performance is a lot less than what it takes to get. Right. So if you're already you know, like in this example, when we were talking to Amanda, she can already run a sub 40 minute five miles, right? She said 37 minutes easy when she's sick. You don't need a lot to maintain that, right? That's Same thing with strength. That's why yeah. I thought only even one day of doing the full run yeah. and then half of the run on another day and then only a one mile the other day. So you're talking about seven minutes on one day. She yeah. actually sprints, uh, what, another 14 to 20-something minutes on yeah. another day. And then only one day is she hitting that 35, 40 right. minutes. Just and, to maintain the skill. And she'll actually probably see she might imp Im improve a little bit. Uh, from that so I easily maintain that and then with two or three days of strength training she should be able to put on some good muscle hey if you enjoyed that clip you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe